cry in a movie. Again, another Pixar Disney thing. <laughs> this always happens. It's an amazing film, though. Thank you. Thanks. Um, how much does it mean to you to have the Mexican culture represented in a Disney Pixar film? I think it's wonderful. And, <laughs> and um, you know, when we set out to tell stories, it's, it's always about, you know, who are these characters? What is this family? But, but in all of our research and all of our studies of Via de Muertos and, and, and the themes behind the actual tradition, it became very clear that this is something that, that is, will not only be meaningful for, for you know, Mexicans and the Mexican culture that it comes from, but this is something that can really touch the world because yeah. we all come from families. And, and to have this example of a way to annualize and memorialize and keep alive the people you love, I think that's something so beautiful and, 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 and to be proud of uh, that it comes from a culture uh, uh, like Mexico. Sure. Speaking of family, uh, how much did your own family experiences influence the film? Well, yours probably really mm. affected <laughs> it being Mexican-American, yeah. uh, which you should talk about. My own family, I'm not a uh, Latino, but um, I came from a big, noisy, uh, loving family. And uh, even though my culture is different than the culture of Miguel, um, I definitely saw a lot of commonality between uh, my family and his own. Um, I grew up uh, in a multi-generational family. My grandparents um, moved from Mexico to come with, live with us when I was in uh, middle school and high school. And you know, we spoke different languages, we were from different generations, but there was, there was a, a chemistry to, to living in a household with people who are your grandparents and your parents and, and, and little kids where you learn what life is like at all these stages all at once and 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 to be able to see Miguel and the messiness of his family and how they all uh, uh, treat these traditions in a different way depending on where they are at life I, I thought that was something that was really beautiful to be able to represent on screen that's amazing now uh, when I was a kid I went to Alvera Street I grew up here in LA oh, cool. and uh, I went on Dios de los Dios de los Muerte did I get that right Dia de los Muertos. There you go. <laughs> yes, uh, I went during that time, and it's it's beautiful. It mm -hmm. was a, a beautiful tradition. Um, now, what part of the tradition did, were you most excited to bring to the film? I mean, we were excited to bring the things that we knew about sure. uh, at, at up front. Where I mean, just the there's so much beautiful folk art and color surrounding uh, Dia de los Muertos, and we wanted to bring all that to the screen. Um, I was excited about the opportunity to bring skeletons to life and uh, just kind of all the animation opportunities we would have with that. Um, but the thing I think I was most excited about at the beginning were learning about all the things we didn't know and all the things that we could make a part of the film. And it wasn't until we went down to Mexico on the many research trips that we went on that we started to learn so many things that we ended up um, incorporating into the film. And uh, it was lovely to be able to do that and create a story that was entirely different from anything we could have you know, just dreamt up from our imaginations without having gone to visit Mexico. Interesting. Now, was there ever a time in your life where your family may not have been supportive of your, your artistic uh, freedom, per se, um, and, and how did you seize your moment? How did you show them that you seize your moment? My family was mostly super supportive. I do remember one time when I was little that Disney was going to be creating a new Mickey Mouse Club show, and I really wanted to go audition to be on it. Like, I really wanted it so bad, and my mom said, no, that you can't fly out to California. And so you did not Mickey seize your Oslo. moment in that opportunity. I didn't in that moment. The, the time I did seize my moment, I think, was when I made the big, bold decision to leave the small town I grew up in in Ohio and travel to Los Angeles with dreams of being a movie director. Awesome. How about you? Um, I, I am very lucky. My parents were always super supportive. My dad would drive me two and a half hours to San Francisco on Saturdays to take animation classes. Oh, that's so, awesome. So, uh, and I think that really speaks to, to what's possible when you have talent and you've got a family to support you. Miguel doesn't at the beginning of this film, but, but I think it's a worthy story to, to tell of how you reconcile those two things. You know, one thing I noticed about this film, Disney's great at doing all these, or Disney Pixar's great at doing all these Easter eggs. Um, one thing I noticed as a theme is the skulls. Mm -hmm. I tried to keep up with the skull count, but I don't think <laughs> I properly did. How many skulls? No, I don't think you, I have no idea. I mean, we try to incorporate them anywhere and everywhere into the architecture and into the cobblestones of the streets. And we even realized at one point that light bulbs look like skull shapes. And oh, so wow. we embraced that by making the filaments inside kind of support the feeling of a skull. Uh, we also looked for a lot of opportunities to find accidental skulls where the architecture lined up in a certain way so that only from that one vantage point would you see kind of a skull form. And it just became kind of a Where's Waldo kind of thing. We just had fun hiding them anywhere and everywhere.